that what the NSA and Obama and others were doing violated our Fourth Amendment. They're just claiming you hadn't been harmed, so you couldn't bring it in. I mean, a total cop-out. Cop-out, because we know that they've gotten everybody's records. Just the very fact that they have them is harm. In fact, there's case law from the federal appellate court itself, which says that when you violate the Constitution, you don't even have to prove harm. It's well, if I take your mail out of your mailbox, it's a federal offense because I stole your private data. Right. It doesn't even mean you have to open it. So in this case, uh, they sent it back to Leon. And... All, and Leon said to us, he said, look, make a few changes in your original complaint. They also said that maybe we didn't sue the right Verizon company. We did, and the government has had to admit that since. But go ahead and get this other Verizon company, Verizon Business Network Services, which uh, the appellate court uses as an excuse not to affirm the preliminary injunction of Judge Leon. So we went out and we got a plaintiff with Verizon Business Services. So we mooted out the whole issue, as lawyers said. And we're back in front of Leon, and Leon says he wants to move quickly. He wants to enter a preliminary injunction. He's basically telling the appellate court, yeah, I'll do what you say, but I'm going to enter an injunction because I believe that every day there's a constitutional violation of Americans' rights is one day too much. And we have an oral argument now set for October 8th, just in a few weeks, and I'm confident the judge will enter a new preliminary injunction and set a precedent that this kind of thing can't happen. And what's really important here, Alex, is that our so-called government, and I emphasize so-called because we really don't have a government. They, they're not our government. They're the government of themselves, of the establishment, both Republican and Democrat, that this cannot be permitted. And this will set a precedent. And Judge Leon will retain jurisdiction to monitor what they're doing. He can haul them in any time he wants to see if they're obeying the Fourth Amendment. Because without that court supervision, the NSA will continue to do whatever it wants. And it's not just the NSA. They work with the CIA. And the CIA, contrary to what they've been telling people that they only operate overseas, has been operating domestically, too. They all work together. So we live in what Judge Leon found in his order of December 16, 2013, in an almost Orwellian state of Big Brother, where they gather dirt on any of us and all of us. Uh, we know that they're gathering dirt on judges, on congressmen, on senators. Probably have dirt on Obama. They probably blackmail him, too. And that's the irony. They let Obama do his black Muslim thing. Okay, he can go off and sign these ridiculous agreements that undercut Israel and the United States. He can walk around with his ring that says, my only God is Allah. He can forget about persecution towards Christians in the, in the Far East, in the Middle East, because, in fact, he's Muslim and, you know, tacitly or, or directly approves of it, go do your thing. But we're in control. We, the intelligence agencies of this country, we call the ultimate shot, and we're here for power and probably money, and, and that's what we face right now. And it helps explain why Chief Justice John Roberts may have flipped on Obamacare, uh, because we know that they have his data, and perhaps they blackmailed him. And if they can blackmail him, they can blackmail any of us, and it keeps us from fighting back. So this is the kind of world that we live in, and that's why I made reference to your, uh, you know, the right. I forgot the exact phrase that you used. It. The controlled right. I mean, that's they're intimidated, they're dominated, they are lapdogs of the Democrats. Right, and that's why Trump is doing so well, because all these people can get up on the stage, they can say whatever they want, but in the end, they don't do anything because they're controlled. And maybe Trump's out there. Maybe he's insulting people. I don't approve of that. You don't either, I'm sure. But they figure, hey, what do we have to lose? Freedom is just another word for nothing left to lose, says John, Janis Joplin. It is uh, insane. Uh, you know, you're a smart constitutional lawyer. You've operated at the highest levels. You've gotten the president you know, impeached in the House, not in the Senate. You've got him indicted in the House. I mean, it seems like, and I've studied history, people didn't used to be this reckless in the power structure. I'm not even lionizing them. It seems like the establishment doesn't realize... When they get rid of checks and balances, they get rid of their own protections. They're burning down our own house. Why would the elite want to bring in totalitarianism when historically it's the most dangerous for the establishment in the midterm? That's right. Here's the irony here. Is that the left is more in favor of curtailing the NSA than the right. Okay, You saw Mitch McConnell. You saw Lindsey Graham. You saw John McCain, 
senators, you see Congressman Peter King, all Republicans and others, saying the NSA is great, best thing since sliced bread. Let them spy on all of us because they're protecting us against terrorism. Well, you know what? Judge Leon found they hadn't stopped one terrorist attack with their so-called uh, surveillance programs. Look at what's and happening in Europe right now. We're 14 years after 9-11, and now they admit one out of 20 people is a jihadi. They're bragging about it. You're a smart guy. I have a lot of contacts. What is this uh, Obama backing ISIS, backing al-Qaeda in Syria? 50 intelligence operatives have gone public. The former head of defense intelligence, the general, goes public, says we were ordered to do this. The deputy head of the CIA comes out, says there should be an investigation. Is that not a good sign that the Pentagon does not want to back Saudi Arabia and al-Qaeda in their takeover of the Middle East? I think it's a sign that the Pentagon and reference has been made recently to this, has bowed down to Obama just like Ob Obama bowed down to the Saudi king. Is that, regrettably, our military, and there are exceptions, uh, is run by yes-men. That's the way you get to be chairman of the Joint Chiefs and staff of staff. You don't ruffle feathers. And in our history, when generals have done that, like General MacArthur with the Korean War when he wanted to take care of China, or General P Patton when he wanted to get rid of the Soviet Union when we had an opportunity after World War II. They've been fired. They've been shown the door. So who runs our military? Yes, men. So if the president does not have our interest at heart, they're not going to go against him. You know, maybe Obama's pushing to the point to maybe someday they will uh, wage a coup in this country. I'm not advocating that. But I know that some of these retired generals uh, and admirals have talked about it. I know that. It's been in, in the public domain because Obama, and I'll say it straight up because no one else will, you will, Obama is a Muslim through and through. Obama sympathizes with a Muslim caliphate. Obama simplifies, sim sympathizes with the mullahs in Tehran. He sympathizes with the radicals in the Far East, and that's why he never holds any of them accountable. He doesn't sympathize with Christians and Jews. He sympathizes with his own people, and that's why these things are happening. And it's time that someone called it like it is. And that's why, you know, Alex, a couple of years ago, I was in front of the World War II Memorial, and I was saying tongue-in-cheek, okay, it was, a, it was a satire, but it rang true, and it rang, rang, rings true now more than ever. I said, President Obama, get up off your knees, put the Quran down, and come out with your hands up. He is not for Christians and Jews. He's for Muslims. And that's why you listen to these people on the stage yesterday. None of them, absolutely none will confront this issue. He's not incompetent. It's not that he doesn't know what he's doing. It's not that he's weak. He is furthering a Muslim caliphate. Those are his people. Well, Larry, I would hear you, because you've been on, coming on the show for 16, 17, 18 years. I mean, I remember having you on like in 1996 and stuff when you were really going after the Clintons. So I guess 20 years. But I would hear you, and I respected you, and I'd hear you on Glenn Beck six, seven years ago. I would hear you. You'd come on here. You'd go off into caliphates. They're going to take over Europe, this plan, that. And I'd go, come on, that's Islamophobic. Not all the Muslims are radical. And I've had to say on air, one of the few things I've been wrong about is when you started saying he was a secret radical Muslim and planned this takeover, when I look at what he's doing with our allies throwing him out in Egypt and putting in all the radicals and, 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 and what's happening in Syria and everywhere, and then his cousin Odinga and the funding of the Muslim Brotherhood, I look at it, none of it's good for American interest. None of it's good for anybody's interest. Not even Muslims' interest. He really is backing head-chopping loons. And, he went, and they said when he spoke in Cairo, when he was first in office, that the Muslims were freaked out. He spoke better than a, than a, a priest, you know, you know, better than a scribe, better than um, a religious leader. And I, I guess to look at it, he, that might be the case. How, does he, how do you think then, since I guess you're being proven right, what does he want to pull off? I mean, what's the end game? To become the Mahdi or something? <laughs> yeah, it's not funny. Uh, let me back up a little bit. Somebody sent me a video recently uh, Muslim about Obama in his own words, you know, boasting that he's a Muslim. It's on our website, freedomwatchusa.org, freedomwatchusa.org. They can see about our NSA case and everything else there, too. Yes, he, he wants to bring the United States down to its knees. He admired his father. His father was Muslim. His father was thrown out of this country because he overstayed his student visa, much like many Muslims are doing these days and others. And Obama, in, in his heart, 
has disdain, but he's very smart because he pulled a number over all, all of us. He defrauded us. I don't believe that he's a natural-born citizen to be president of the United States. He told everybody he's a Christian. He's not. And actions speak louder than words. And yes, I do believe in his heart. Uh, he would like to see the world run by Muslims, because that is what Islam teaches. Okay, Now, not all Muslims are bad people. There are some good Muslims. They're no longer Muslims. They quit. Okay, They saw what was wrong with it. But in my own view is that anybody who practices the tenets of the Holy Quran, as Obama always calls it, never the Quran, the Holy Quran, anybody who practices that is a danger because Islam teaches that you have to get rid of the infidels. And who are the infidels? Christians and Jews and others, Hindus, others. Look, the Indians don't get along with the Muslims either because the Muslims would like to eliminate the Hindus as well. That's their religion. So... The Holy Quran, in the words of, of Obama, uh, he's furthering what Allah teaches. That's my view. Well, the proof's in the pudding. It's happening regardless. And they're telling German women don't wear short skirts. It offends the migrants that are invading and running around screaming. And then Saudi Arabia won't take one of them. Uh, it's just absolutely insane to see this happening. And I wonder what's next. I mean, look at the White House and George Soros connected to kill the cop movement. They're actually trying to start a shooting revolution in this country, Larry. Well, absolutely. And, and you know who's behind that, too? Louis Farrakhan. Who is Louis Farrakhan? A friend of, of Barack and Michelle Obama from Chicago, head of the Nation of Islam, someone who has called Jews pigs, gutter religion, uh, has advocated recently, just the last few years ago, killing cops and killing whites. And by extension, killing Jews, because Farrakhan hates Jews, okay? And there's some Jewish cops, uh, so you can get a twofer if you'd like. So this is, this is what we're dealing with. You know, you are who you associate with, Alex. And Obama has associated with these people and brought them in uh, throughout his lifetime. But he was smart enough and smooth enough that he could pull the wool over the not-educated uh, American electorate. Sure. Well, I mean, I'll say this. I mean, much I... Like yeah. And let me finish this thought. I'm not equating him with Hitler, okay? Nobody's in that league. But that's what Hitler did in World War II. Germany was on its knees. It was dying economically. The Germans had a predilection for someone like Hitler in any event. <clears throat> but he convinced them that he could bring them out of their situation. And Obama did the same. And now, you know, six and a half years later, uh, you know, we have someone like this who's destroying this country. And, and the Republicans sit there playing political games, and that's why Republicans, true Republicans, are mad at their own people because the Boehners and McConnells of the world roll over to him. Obama's won every victory with them. They're totally defeated. They're a bunch of losers, and, and that's why Trump is, uh, is surging, and he'll continue to surge dis despite his uh, performance last night in the debate. Do, do you think Trump's for real? I don't know if he's for real or not, but... People are willing to grasp at straws right now like they're willing to grasp at Hitler because we have no choice. I don't think uh, – I think Donald Trump is a good man. I think he's probably uncontrolled in his mouth, okay? But he's, he's not a traitor to this country. I think he wants to make this country great again. I believe that. And I think he's saying a lot of things that's resonating. No, I tend but, to agree with you. People he... are desperate. People are desperate for someone who will actually do something. Well, that's my final statement. I don't see how the establishment in, in Obama thinks they're going to start a civil war with gun owners and veterans and people, and they're going to kick our butts. I mean, all the folks want to start some shooting war and kill all the cops and people. And I got my problems with the police state. You're going to get your butt kicked. I mean, haven't they looked at the numbers, the demographics, that they're not going to win this civil war, Larry Clayman? Well, they have the NSA. So far, they have the military. So far, they have the police. An analogy I use, Alex, is that... I'll tell you what, do five more minutes with us. I know you got to go, but we're going to go to break. Come back, finish yeah, up your so analogy. I complete this thought. Yeah, complete that thought. FreedomWatchUSA.org. And again, I respect Larry Klayman. I've said every time he's on, and he's been on for like 19 years. I disagree with him on this whole Muslim thing, and I'm sorry. It's just all coming true, folks. I mean, it's just crazy. It's the final countdown. One hour and 27 minutes left from the 28-hour live broadcast. The countdown has begun. I'll be co-hosting right into the next hour with Leanne McAdoo, Anthony Gucciardi, your phone calls, and more. Our guest, Larry Klayman, the founder of Judicial Watch, who heads up FreedomWatchUSA.org, is our guest.
and he is joining us right now. Finishing up your thought, 